good morning. It's uh, Sunday morning, and that means that once again it's time for the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roofs of the basement and everything in between. The guy who tells us that every house has a story, professional home inspector Jack Mill. Good morning, Jack. How are you doing today? Well, Barry, I am excellent. And, you know, one thing I've learned about being in this profession is that I, I find sometimes the language that we, we disperse uh, and the communication that we have with our buyers sometimes um, border on the mundane. In other words, what I call the stupid stuff. And I figured that I've come across so many little things during the course of my career as a home inspector that I was just going to dedicate a show to it today. Sounds and good. we got a lot of stupid stuff around here at the radio station, too. <laughs> it's amazing. And it's just the kind of things that we kind of push aside. I'll do it tomorrow when I get a moment. You know, all these little catchphrases that says, you know what, it, it, it's not important. Um, but at the end of the day, some of the things we're going to talk about are really important, and they can actually save your life. So um, before I start the show, of course, I always want to start my, you know, thank my sponsors because without them, I wouldn't have the benefit of chatting with you today. So Bucksmont Inspections, Rob Bowie, very good at evaluating and testing and designing on-site sewage systems. So I always like to say, if you flush your toilet and it ends up in your yard, you want to make sure that that system is top-notch. Uh-huh. So you can reach out to Rob at 215-669-4213. Uh, their website is BucksmontInspections.com. They are located out of Sellersville, Pennsylvania, but they do service a, a wide area and just very good at what they do. Borrow exterminating. I'd like to get Rob Bruno back on the air uh, soon, so I'm going to reach out to him. But he does termite as well as radon testing. It's located in Delaware County in, in a town called Glen Olden. Uh, you can reach out to Rob at 610-586-5640, and their website is borrowexterminating.com. Pest Blaster, uh, we had Mike Canner on the, on the phone and, and over communication just a few weeks ago, and we were talking about uh, tightening up your home um, for winter so we don't get those little pesky uh, varmints coming into our house. But they do get involved in radon testing, mold testing, with destroying insect uh, treatments, as well as pest removal. So they're at 215-295-5555. And their website is pestblaster.com. BrainFlushGear.com, Kevin Zoln, their uh, executive director there. I, I like to stay in touch with him because uh, even though our July trip is well over, already designing what we want to prepare for next year's uh, motorcycle event. So it's simple as that, BrainFlushGear.com or contact at BrainFlushGear.com. And, of course, Tri-County Inspection Company. We celebrated our 30th anniversary this uh, July, and uh, we are busy. And uh, so it's really nice to see that, you know, the Labor Day lull is kind of behind us. I'm actually training a new inspector. He'll be out on the road within the next uh, three to four weeks. So um, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, in the Bucks and Montgomery County areas in Pennsylvania, you can find us at 215-295-2030, Delaware County, 610-296-2004, the Lehigh Valley, 610 610- Three four six seven eight eight zero in South Jersey eight five six eight five three four two two four and of course our website is tcinspect.com. Uh, so um, you know as always, please thank the sponsors and let them know that you heard their ad on the House Whisper Show. Uh, next week, I, I will promise to reopen the, the email box as it's bulging over with great topics and, and thank you for that. So, as always, please email me uh, your thoughts to the House Whisper Show at gmail.com. And for previous shows and archives, you can visit the House Whisper Show.com. Of course, I always like to thank WD, WDB for the podcast uh, you know, that will be available from, from this Sunday to next Sunday at WDBAM.com. So, let's get started. Uh, again, the title of the show is Stupid Stuff That We Take For Granted, But We Should Do It Anyway. So my first topic is, when was the last time that you cleaned your dryer vent? And 
you know, with gas in particular, one of the most dangerous things about a gas dryer is that the tube that goes from the back of your dryer to the exterior of your home not only carries the lint, uh, you know, that's accumulated by your clothes, uh, but it also carries out carbon monoxide. So this is one of those things where uh, you really have to stay on top of. And I tell my clients always to clean their dryers at least once a year for gas. Uh, electric is not important, but I'm going to go over a couple uh, things that I have found. And I got this information from J.A. Smith Heating and Air Conditioning. They're located out of Warm Sir, and they're very good at what they do. And just, for an, just to let you know, they charge $96 to clean your dryer vent if you're not comfortable doing it. So reading some, from some information that he provided me, Consumer Product Safety Commission reports that there were over 15,600 dryer fires occurred, killing 20 people, injuring wow. 370 more, and causing over $75.4 million in property damage. According to the CPSC, in most of these cases, the culprit was lint getting caught in the machine's heating element, sparking and fueling a fire. With gas dryers, there is also that concern of carbon monoxide poisoning. And my point was that since lint and flue gases use the same avenue of exit from the home, a blocked vent can cause carbon monoxide fumes to back up into the home. So, folks, here are a couple of the warning signs. A dryer is still producing heat, but taking longer and longer to dry clothes, especially towels and jeans or your heavier garments. Uh, the second point is clothes that are damp or hotter than usual at the end of the cycle. And, and third is, you know, check that outdoor flapper or the vent hood because it should open fully when the dryer is on. Now, some of the benefits, uh, you know, of drying your vent is it allows your dryer to operate more, efficient, or more efficiently using less energy and saving you money. Also, it protects your dryer from excessive wear and premature death. I like that term. Third, it helps your clothes dry faster, a saving, you know, time savings for your busy families. It also helps reduce household dust and humidity. Uh, finally, it helps preserve clothing as the life of many fabrics is damaged by excessive high heat. So this, this was Jeff's suggestions. Most vents need to be cleaned every two or three years, determining on factors that in, which include how heavily the dryer is used, how long the vent is and the materials used, the age and the type of dryer used, and the design of the vent. So as a home inspector, when, you know, as we find out how many people are occupying the home, if there's only two adults, well, t typically, you know, young people, they do their laundry maybe every two weeks. But once you have an infant, you know, that, and especially two and sometimes three, well, the dryer's never turned off. So I, I advise my folks to use their anniversary date as to when they moved into the home um, to clear the dryer vent. I think it's an easy way to remember it. I do mine the day after Thanksgiving because I take a day off, you know, and uh, so I get a long weekend there, and that's when I do mine. And the length of the dryer vent is important, and especially the amount of bends uh, that are in that dryer vent. So every bend you have adds five feet of length. So if you've got three bends and a 10-foot length, well, folks, that's 25 feet. So a dryer can vent 30 feet realistically. Um, and, of course, the design of the vent. And what we mean by that is with electric dryers, you can get away with the slinky stuff. It's either, um, you know, silver foil or plastic, but not, not for a gas dryer. It has to be rigid because all that slinky stuff is going to hold um, – the lint uh, literally, you know, in those various compartments. And plastic, it just melts. It turns extra crispy uh, with a gas dryer, um, and then all of a sudden it breaks and you have lint everywhere. So, um, you know, what I want you to do is if you don't remember when you last cleaned your dryer vent, then what I'm asking you to do is on every October 11th, the date of this show, I want you to clean your dryer vent. So, um, so let's move on. So dryer vents, something that's stupid, but we have to stay on top of. So next topic, when was the last time you changed your filter on your heating and cooling equipment? And, you know, if, if you really have to give it thought, 
Well, then it's it's been too long. Most filters are designed for 30 uh, to 90 days. We we we. Um, we, we tell our clients, as at least I like to recommend the 30-day filters. So you can either change it at the first of the month, um, and you can put you know this date on your on your smartphone, your calendar, or just don't forget it. But the other thing I tell my clients is when you write the mortgage check, it's time to change the filter. And buy a box, because if you have them, you'll change them. And the cheap filters, the 30-day filters, are, are cheap. I mean, they're only like 80 cents. So you can get a year's worth for about 10 bucks. The pleated filters are every 90 days. But you do have to remember when you put it in or when you're going to change them. And uh, I just, you know, I find people forget. Um, one client the other day told me, you know, he changes them at the beginning of each season. Now, that sounds good, but at the end of the day, don't forget. So it's just one of those things that we take for granted. But I'll tell you what, if you're complaining or your family is complaining of dry sinuses, folks, you're just recirculating dust. It gets stuck in the blower. It lowers the efficiency of the furnace. It's going to get stuck on your A-coil for your air conditioning if you have central air, and it's going to raise the cost of operating the, the equipment. So uh, an, an 80 cent filter once a month will keep your air fresh and it's going to keep your system running uh, more efficiently. How about, uh, on that note, we uh, take a little break, Jack. Okay, let's uh, do that because uh, when we come back, Barry, we're, we're going to talk ice cubes. Oh, okay. My, my favorite subject. <laughs> we'll, we'll be back, uh, Jack. We're talking about the stupid stuff here. There's an old expression, there's no cure for stupid. You can't fix stupid. But actually, Jack is fixing it on today's show. And we'll be back with more stuff right after this. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood-destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs please consider bucks mod inspections they've been serving the bucks and montgomery county areas for over 15 years as members of the pennsylvania septage management association the pennsylvania association of sewage enforcement officers and the pennsylvania association for professional soil scientists bucks mod inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement please call rob bowie at 215-66 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. Dry County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 30 years. For all of your real estate transactions, call Tri County Inspections at 215 295 2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856 
853-4224. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They have performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. Call 215-295-2030 or 856-853-4224. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months, looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. Okay, we are back. Jack Millen is here with a great topic today, stupid stuff. Jack, uh, what other stupid stuff uh, is on your agenda for today? Well, thank you, Barry. But, you know, the first segment, we talked about dryer vents. We talked about changing the filter in your furnace. But this is a good one, uh, ice cubes. When was the last time that you threw out your ice cubes that have been sitting in the bin of your freezer? It's, it's, again, it's one of those things that when we want them, we either use the dispenser in the door or we just re- reach in with our hands and pull them out and, um, and put them in our drinks. I'd say even though most refrigerators have that ice maker attachment in the door, I bet you 80% of the people don't even use it. Um, so what happens is all those old ice cubes kind of accumulate at the bottom of the bin, which can generate bacteria. So I think every once in a while, and, you know, what's, a, what's once in a while? Maybe twice a year, okay? Think about it that way. We have a holiday season, don't we, at the end of, uh, you know, mid, mid to end of December. And, you know, that might be the best time to do it before that holiday kicks in because you're entertaining much more often. So maybe right before Thanksgiving or so, pull the ice bin out, thoroughly clean it, sanitize it, throw it in the dishwasher, uh, turn off the ice maker, of course, okay? In most cases, you, you know, unless the bin is in, it's not going to make ice anyway. And then start fresh. Um, and, and what you can do is uh, you can t- actually take your ice cubes, put them in your sink, put warm water over them, and then turn on your garbage disposal. Because although you think you're wasting ice cubes, you're actually sharpening your garbage disposal. And when was the last time that you changed the little filter system? You know, it looks like a cartridge, you know, in your refrigerator today or those that are found in line. I mean, those are supposed to be swapped out maybe every three to six months. And, you know, if you put it in 10 years ago, I don't know what's growing in that thing now. But, again, it's, it's time to, to swap them out. Um, and remember, it's only water. Again, sanitize the bin reinstall it and by the next day the bin is filled again and again i love this little simple stuff but um but let's move on to something else that we may not have done for a while when was the last time you cleaned your oven i mean when was the last time that you did it and and you know we think with the holidays you know which are going to start in a month from now i would suggest that you do it now but i think the most important thing is that you have to be home when you do it. And why is that? That's because when you latch the oven and you set it on clean, the, t- the interior temperature of the oven can exceed 800 degrees. So if you have not cleaned that oven for a while, fires have e- easily started um, uh, you know, from those excess- ex- exceedingly dirty oven boxes. You have to make sure that you read the oven instructions. You have to make sure you re- remove the racks and, and I tell my clients to stay at home for the next four hours. And just FYI, guys, my own oven caught fire. 
But, you know, I was able to put it out with my exhaust fan. But if, if it can happen in my house, it could happen in yours. So, and, and never, ever, ever, ever use, um, you know, the Tony Randall easy off oven cleaner if you have a self-cleaning oven. Uh, don't, don't ever do that. It's harmful for the interior uh, cabinet of the oven. So here's another one. Every house should have an appropriate fire extinguisher. Do you know where yours is? And, and when was the last time that you checked that little arrow to see if it's still charged or not? And here's a good point. Do you know how to use it in case of an emergency? Because most people don't. It's sitting on the wall. They've never had to pull it off the wall. They don't know, do, they, do you hold it up? Do you turn it upside down? The pin you pull, how far do you have to be? And, you know, so read it because in case of an emergency, you're, you're on reflexes. And, and, I, and I ask that you read the instructions because electrical fires are different than fireplace fires. So um, you have to have a different chemical for each use. And I know nobody knows that. So, I mean, this can truly save your family's life and that of your home. And as we all know, fire starts small and then grow. So keep the extin extinguisher handy and let all adult members of the family know where it is and how to use it. So speaking of fireplaces, if you burn wood, uh, when was the last time that you cleaned the flue? You know, most people tend to do it at the end of the season, and if you didn't, well, you need to do it now. You know, I know with football, you know, uh, you got football and fires, holidays and fires, hunting and fires. Um, so anywhere from about 120 to $200 can get you ready for the 2015 season. Uh, too many homes I inspect still has the ash bed from last season. And I tell my clients to clean the flu when they take possession because if the ash bed is still there, well, you know, the, the, then they didn't bother to clean the flu. And I always urge that you use a mason to clear the flu or, 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 to, or to get a really good re referral because, unfortunately, folks, um, some chimney sweeps just may be questionable as to reputation or ethics. And, and my motto is, you know, clean it, but, but don't scare people for additional profits. And you can easily open up your damper, take a look up, utilize a flashlight, uh, and if you see things that kind of look like charcoal on, uh, you know, on, the, on the top of the, what we call the throat or in, in the chimney liner, you have to clean it now. You really have to clean it now. Some people can do it on their own, and it does take someone to get up on the roof and, and use the brushes. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, be prepared for what's coming. Uh, so again, 120 to 200 bucks, uh, and again, it's it's very important that you get your referral. Now, here's some food for thought. Do you really need the humidifier that's mounted on your furnace? If you think about it, the humidifier is drawing dirty air uh, from the return pumping moisture-laden air into your, into your supply duct above the furnace, typically adding mold and or other moisture-laden spores to emigrate from uh, your supplies throughout your home. Well, I can tell you, home inspectors and humidifiers have never seen eye to eye. The humidistat is usually in the basement away from everyday activity, but should be adjusted according to outside ambient temperature. So, you know, we had a fairly warm September, um, but now that we're starting to raise our thermostats here in October, if you have a 50-degree day and a 20-degree night, well, you have to change the amount of humidity that's being dispersed into the plenum above your furnace. And nobody reads the, the fine print which says, uh, again, adjusted according to outside ambient temperature, you have to clean the, the membrane inside the box every two weeks in the vinegar and water solution to kill the bacteria that grows on it. And, you, and it also needs to be turned off at the end of the heating season and drained um, so you don't allow mold to grow. Uh, plus, you know, it's, it's not very healthy for your furnace. So a 25-year furnace may last maybe 15 to 20 years if you have the humidity set too high, and nobody knows where to set it. And most of the ones I see are set on rainforest. 
so there's a body within the furnace called the heat exchanger, which determines what good air goes to your home, what bad air goes out the chimney, which will uh, rust prematurely, uh, again, due to the humidifier. So what happens is the heat exchanger is the heart of the furnace. If that rusts, that can allow carbon monoxide to go into your home and some of the better air to go outside. So take a look at your humidifier. Take a look at the drain tube under it. If it has mold in it, uh, it's not healthy, guys. So do me a favor and turn it off. I prefer that you remove it. Um, and, and then buy a humidifier for your home and, you know, that can go in the hallway or go in the kids' bedrooms because, you know, as uh, every three days you're going to have to put fresh water in it, and at the end of the day you're going to put it in a box. But a lot of times uh, as humans we give off enough humidity uh, to help save your hardwood floors, the piano, and the living room furniture. So... Um, so just just some simple things that that you we kind of take for granted but can truly affect your health if you have animals and you have a humidifier uh there's a chance chances are that the dander and the excessive hair from the animals can end up in your ductwork too so if any of your kids seem to have allergies particularly starting in the fall and goes through the winter i would suggest that you get your ducts cleaned if you can't remember or never cleaned your ducts um, that that might be eight hundred dollars of of well spent money, and it's truly amazing uh, what they can pull out of your ductwork. Um, and again, I would suggest you be there because it, it's truly amazing. You know, as they go to leave your house um, and and your ducts are now cleaned, what you've been living with. And again, these are all little things that we've taken for granted over the years. And and again, like I said at the beginning of the show, I'll do it next week. So as it is Sunday, please spend time with friends and family, and I'll talk to you next week on the House Whisperer Show. Absolutely, and tune in next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And to listen to previous programs, or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com. I'm Barry Reisman, and thank you so much for listening to WWDB. Oh, oh, oh.